Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line from NBC Sports Boston is our friend Tom Curran. How are you doing, Tom? Tremendous, Rich. How are you and the guys? Uh, we're hanging What's in up, there. Tom? We're hanging in there. Uh, we, we love our quick game here, to be honest with you. We love it. We can't get enough of our quick game. Um, <laughs> That's because you process so quickly. <laughs> what do you got for me? What do you got for me on that uh, moment and what it really means inside that building, Tom? Frustration has yielded to exasperation. Bill Belichick, you know, throughout the offseason preached patience, which I think in some ways, in an unpatriotic fashion, translated to a lack of urgency. You know, we're going to be putting something new in. It's going to take some time. Need you to be patient. You know, it might be five or six weeks. You never know. Oh, maybe it'll be Thanksgiving. Yet the players have a season here going on, and they've got 21 touchdowns as an offense. Mac Jones is in his second year, and the offense has regressed so drastically. And they've handcuffed him from taking any risks at all so profoundly that it's maddening. And I think we heard that in the locker room last night. I mean, and we're watching the game for the folks who stuck with it. God bless you all the way to, to the end. You're watching the Patriots punt when they're down 24 to seven, when you know the bills are probably going to embark on an eight minute drive afterwards. They actually did not, but the process for the Patriots to even get in the red zone, which they didn't cash in took forever. And then you kick a field goal. I mean, you're not going to score enough points. And it's bizarre because the Patriots are mistake-laden. They're tentative. Uh, timid was a used, uh, word used to describe the offense by one of the players to our Phil Perry last night. And it's, there's just a weird lack of urgency that exists with the team, it seems. So the narrative that Belichick has let Mac Jones down because of who he hired as the offensive coordinator, and that's why he's regressed. Is that fair or not? It's beyond fair. It's accurate. And it's not a narrative. It's straight fact. I mean, you, you can't go from one of the best offensive coordinators the league's seen this century to a guy who hasn't done it, no matter his acumen as a coach overall, and then ask him to implement a new offense after saying goodbye to their most competent offensive lineman, Shaq Mason, change the language and do all that while you're coaching an offensive line that has tackles at either side that are sometimes hurt or inconsistent. Plus, start a rookie at left guard. It's not Matt Patricia's fault that he didn't say, no, I don't think I'm up to this. It's Bill's fault to think that it was going to work. And when the media spent the entire offseason, and fans did too, wondering why this was a good idea, Bill said, blame me. So that's really where it lands. And you're taking a step back in the second year of a rookie contract, which is the most, most valuable thing you can have in the NFL with a good quarterback. The Patriots have more cap space allocated to tight ends than any team in the league. They have the third most cap space allocated to wide receivers, believe it or not. And they won't throw the ball because they're afraid of mistakes. So, I guess then why? Because <laughs> it, it, it's not like Belichick doesn't know it, right, or can't see it, or is he is is loyalty something that he just is rewarding and believes in himself? Uh, you know what I mean? Like I I, I don't yeah. I, I don't get it. Like I mean, he's he's brilliant. Well, he's, I think he can self scout like anybody else better than anybody else. So how how does this happen, Tom? I think there's a that's a little bit of a mythology okay. that surrounds Bill. He's perpetually surprised these days, perpetually stunned at the outcomes of things. Oh, what's going to happen if I bench Malcolm Butler in a Super Bowl? It's not like the Eagles are going to score 30 on us. No, they're going to score 41. You know, what, what's Tom going to do? Move? Quit? Not play here anymore? Yeah. I mean, no one was more stunned by Brady saying, I'm out of here, than Bill. In 2019, they're negotiating a contract. Brady's pissed. He's about to walk out of camp. One of the assistants goes to Bill and says, you got to do something. He's, he's about to leave. Bill goes, really? Yeah. So putting Matt Patricia in that spot and being cocksure that it's going to work just fine is just the latest instance of being really surprised that, wow, this didn't work as I thought it was going to. Huh. Who knew? 
Tom Curran, NBC Sports Boston, Patriots insider here on the Rich Eisen Show. There's still so much road left, though. You know what I mean? Like, there's five games left. There's a, sure. a tie break that they can put on the table on on the Jets and take their spot. Um, and and we did see – we did, I mean, you want to talk about proof of life. Uh, Thanksgiving night, I thought Mac looked great. He was decisive. And, and there was an intermediate passing game uh, that I didn't see last night that I did see against Minnesota. Might just chalk it up to different defenses. I don't know, but – what, what do you think happens from here on the rest of the way, Tom? That, to me, is, is what's fascinating to, to look at. What's the goal? To me, 2022 was not about winning a Super Bowl. It was about progress generated from what the team was last January with the decisions made. Is Mac Jones a better player? Does the team have a better, you know, are they more competitive with the Buffalo Bills? Not only are they just about the same level of competitiveness with that team. They've got the Miami Dolphins who are now undeniably ahead of them, and maybe the Jets are too. So you can get to 8-6 and six by beating Las Vegas and Arizona the next two weeks, and on paper that's certainly possible. You might even be able to get to 9-6 and six by surprising the Bengals on Christmas Eve. You know, they're up there competing for airspace with Santa. So you have the opportunity to get to nine and six, but to what end? And I, I don't like rich when people are, Oh, we're championship driven here. Nothing but Lombardi. Cut it out. You know, we spent a lot of time and 31 franchises spend a lot of time, not getting Lombardi and want an improving product. I think that's what's disappointing here is no matter what they do in the next three weeks or down the stretch, have they improved this year and gotten closer to reaching a point where they're part of the NFL's upper crust? Not even the elite, the upper crust, because they're awfully mediocre right now. What about the idea of maybe listening to to Mac and saying, all right, we're going to open this thing up, and Kendrick Bourne and guys who said last night that that th- this was not working, and, you know, uh, and maybe sacrifice, if you will, what you told us in the beginning of the season about what the intention of doing uh, for and to this offense was, in fact, simplifying it because it was way too damn complicated underneath Josh McDaniel's tenure with Brady and, and, and a young kid and Mac Jones to the point where skilled players were having trouble getting up to speed if they just arrived, right? Isn't that right. what the concept uh, was? I think what's hard about that is Bill would say, I mean, we had Trent Brown who was sick, Isaiah wins out, Jodney Kajust, the other right tackle is out. We're down to Connor McDermott. We took off a practice squad from the Jets, what do you want us to do? But even if those guys were in there, maybe they would throw it downfield more. But if you look at the way the Patriots have behaved since the Bears game, they had a decent stretch with Bailey Zappi in there and Mac Jones. Steelers game in week two, then they threw it all over the place against the Ravens, lost the game and had three picks. And after that three-pick game, I think Bill said, okay, you see who we are here? We can't protect them. When he's under duress and we're asking him to be aggressive, he throws picks. Let's just try not to lose some of these games, Matt. And that's where these players are looking at each other and say, I didn't come here to not lose games offensively. Came here to play. So I think there's going to be a resistance on Bill's part to saying, all right, we're going to start chucking it everywhere against Arizona. Because he'll look at that as a winnable game. Hmm. But you threw it all over the place against Minnesota in one. I mean, it's weird. You have to score. But they're afraid to take the chances that are – part of the part and parcel of scoring how do you think this is all sitting with Kraft? i'm sorry how do you think this is all sitting with rkk robert Kraft? how do you think this is all sitting with him right now not not great not great you know he, he pointed out that he wanted to see you know he was as disappointed as anybody not just in the fact the Patriots have declined, but they had gone three years without a playoff win. Um, he mentioned that he wants the team to compete now. It's not doing that. He felt as if the investment in the players that the team made last year with Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar, Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry, that that would be realized. He anticipated, and this is all that he said on the record in March at the owners' meetings, he anticipated there would be a lot of improvement for Mac Jones, that he felt that that was the right guy. And he understood, or he didn't understand, he, he said the Bill has earned the right to do an unconventional thing in his coaching staff 
Um, so he's not going to second guess Bill because he's been writing an awful lot with, you know, the coaching staff and the decisions he's made. But he's watching. He's paying attention. He wants to see progress, and it's not really happening this year. And the product is hard to swallow. You can you can be crappy. Just don't be boring and crappy. <laughs> well, Tom, I'm going to give you one uh, one thing for you, you to maybe uh, run down a ground. I don't mean to stir anything up there in the Boston area, but what gives that the uh, Prince and Princess of Wales go to a Celtic game, but not a Patriot game? Were they not there last night? Uh, what what happened? Did they did they give the well, hi hat to the to the yeah. Patriots? What happened? What, what gives? Very simple. Um, Celtic mm. is a leprechaun. Ah. Okay. Mm. Inoffensive. Not going to be a problem for them. I mean, they got Ireland under their thumb for a long time. Look they don't have you. Northern Ireland back. Look at you going geopolitical um, on me. Look at you going but, geopolitical uh, on me. You know, they're going to put Pat Patriot on the helmet. It's a, it's a direct shot at, at both oh. uh, the Brits and the royalty. That's so true. They specifically timed it up that way. The muskets, the muskets. They couldn't, they, they you know, they just, <laughs> you know what? They, they, didn't, they didn't want to see the whites of Matt Patricia's eyes is what you're saying pretty much right there, you know? Yeah. yeah, well, there's a gotcha. lot of people like that right now. <laughs> Brockman, you just rolled your eyes when Tom, I said that. color me shocked. The guy that gave up 600 yards and 40 points in the Super Bowl can't figure out how to run an offense. <laughs> and almost lost to Blake Gordles. <laughs> like, Sorry, Jesus, Blake. thank God for <laughs> Stefan Gilmore's hand. Wow. This just turned into EEI oh, yeah. all of a sudden. Look at you. Look at you. Is, is it? It's not too late to fire him. I mean, there's still five games left. That's not going to happen. Damn. There will be no firing. You and I know that. He, I mean, grab the menu away from him, maybe. But Jesus. Mm. meaning the play calling. Has, yes, has yes, Joe, not, has not, Joe not Judge learned enough to, to take over play calling for the final five games? Because that was this. the plan, right? I think that that was an aspiration, but I have not... To hear Mac Jones speak, he is much more effusive in his praise of Matt Patricia. And again, Matt Patricia's hands have been tied. It's not just the play calling and coordinating an offense without a title. He's supposed to coach an offensive line that's in utter disarray, along with Billy Yates. I don't know if you could get any coach to execute that. Hmm. I mean, it, it would be like asking McDaniels to be the assistant offensive line coach while he was doing the offense. And let's be honest, McDaniels was better at offense than Patricia. But you would never do that. I mean, to think that this was going to work seamlessly is beyond whistling past the graveyard. Tom Curran, God bless you. Have a great uh, rest of your December. If we don't talk before the beginning of the year, I always appreciate I you. I be downcast. Was that too downcast? No, this is the reality. No, as you not. said, as you said, it's not a narrative. These are facts. So um, that's what you said early on. But what does the E stand for? What does the E oh, and yeah. Tom E. Curran stand for, Tom? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, go follow Tom Everything Curran on Twitter. (laughs) Take care of yourself, Tom. Thanks. Bye, guys. There you go. It's Tom Everything Curran. Good answer. (laughs) That might be a new drop, right? Everything. 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 Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 